Hello everyone, welcome to Chess Master Strategy. The 30th World Chess Championship was played between the defending world champion Russian Grandmaster Anatoly Kapa and the contender, the Swiss Grandmaster Viktor Kotroni in Italy from October the 1st to November 19th in 1981. Karpa won with six wins against two with ten draws. The two players had already played against each other in the 1978 World Chess Championship in Philippines when Karpa also won. Today's video was a round nine game for the 1981 30s World Chess Championship. The key lesson we should learn from this game is how Karpa exploited his opponent's IQP, isolated Queen's Pawn, which is a common feature of the Queen's Gambit and the related openings. At the same time, we could see that Karpa carefully consolidated his position advantage step by step to have reached to the final win. Let's jump into the game right away. This game started with c4, e6, knight, c3, and d5. This is English opening, d4, and bishop e7, now transformed to queen's gambit, declined. Knight f3, knight f6, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, castle, row c1, dc is played for the last book move, queen's gambit decline, modern woman variation. Now, e3, opening this diagonal for the bishop to retake c4 pile. In the normal way, knight should go to c6, but black played a more powerful one, which is c5, directly targeting d4 pawn. Bishop retakes the c4, and cd is played. In the actual game, ed is played. But the problem is white created an isolated pawn for himself. The best move should have been knight take the pawn, or queen takes our one. After D, after E D, knight plays as a C six. Otherwise, knight could also play A six followed by B five, moving up the queen pawn. After knight C six, castle and the black strategy now is try to focus the weakness of opponent's I Q P by eliminating as many pieces as possible, possible to simplify the position. So he played knight h5 to treat off the bishop. If bishop retreat to here, knight takes r1, white going to be um, in a worse position because of the doubling pawn. In this position, bishop has to take the bishop and knight takes r1 back, protecting d5 square, preventing the d4 pawn advancing. Bishop retreat to b3, try to make the rook to control this half open file, also potentially with a combination of the queen targeting h7 square. Now knight gets to f6, protecting h7, also targeting d5. Knight gets to the outpost, bishop d7, leave the room c8 for the rook to take. Now queen moves to e2, otherwise white could have played d at once at this stage, after the trade-off, white is in better of position. And uh, let's get back to the actual game, queen e2. Now rook is to c8, knight gets to center, no hesitation, just take that one to make the position simple file, which is beneficial for the black side. So queen targeting b7 and bishop now defending b7, and knight takes that one. What are you going to do? Think about it. If you're going to use a knight to take that one, you are helping your opponent. So after those trade-off, white doesn't have IQP anymore. So in this position, black use the rook to take the knight. And rook is to c3. Be careful. If you take that one, white going to build a pawn chain for d and c pawn. So queen moves to d6, pawn advancing, prepare for potential f4 to prevent black from moving the pawn to e5. Now rook is to d8. This is a very good move. If you move the rook to here, um, possibly you're going to build a pawn chain. Of course, you can take off the c3 pawn with the second rook, but you're going to lose this pawn as well. So you're going to have um, uh, isolated pawn as well. So rook is to d8, which is the best move, putting pressure on d4 square. Rook d1, and rook is to b6, targeting b4 with the queen. So now queen moves back to e1. Not very accurate, isn't it? Best move should have been queen 
f3 still eyeing on b7 supporting the d4 pawn on the one thing after trade off and with a combination of the b sharp you can targeting f7 square more powerful queen e1 and the queen retreat to d7 protecting the b7 free the rock rock can moving to d6 rogue d3 rogue d6 queen moving back interesting now queen c6 if you take that one knight take that one that's going to be a fork and then also knight is eyeing on, potentially on a2 so in this situation queen moves to f4 which is a good response for the white side so knight gets to d5 center queen moves to d2 queen b6 targeting b4 with a knight two versus one position the best move should have been a3 aiming on b4 but in the actual game bishop take the knight rook take that one which make the position more simplified and is beneficial for the black side rook b3 queen moves to c6 controlling this open file for now protecting b7 queen moves to c3 don't take that one if you take that one white gonna build a pawn chain and it's gonna end it up as a rogue end game so queen moves to d7 very powerful after pawn wants to e5 queen is in total control of this diagonal and potentially this diagonal as well let's see f4 has to be played to preventing e5 and now b6 don't take that one otherwise let's see after the trade-off it's gonna be a um, draw position and uh, we can see how kappa consolidated his positional step by step position advantage step by step very very carefully in this position he played as b6 and the road moves to b4 protecting d4 now b pawn on the walls prepare for a5 trying to kick the rook away so white has to play a4 after the trade-off you can see white's calculation you can see these lines and the diagonals a5 is played first to kick the rock off you have to take that one after take that one queen is moving to half open valve b and in total control because you can't move your major pieces in here so these square become vulnerable for the white side if you use a king the problem is i can go to the rock here first rank and in here you're gonna lose the pawn or the rogue anyway depends on where the king goes and in this position white played as a rogue d2 protecting second rank pawn the ones finally fe and rogue takes that one back aiming for e1 queen moving back if you simply move the rogue to here after those trade-off it's going to be back to draw position and in the actual game Kappa played a very very amazing move think about it what are you gonna do that's correct queen moves back to e8 putting pressure consolidated his position advantage step by step so next move gonna be you're gonna lose the queen so pawn has to take that one if you simply use a king to protecting this one the problem is i can do this one here check you're gonna lose the rogue and if you're using the row to protecting first rank i don't go to first rank then i go to here next move queen gets to here gonna be a checkmate and you're gonna lose the queen anyway in here so pawn has to take that one and i take the row back white in pawn majority but that doesn't mean anything queen moves to here next move gonna be a checkmate check king moves to h7 and queen moves to here another check you can play rogue to here blocking the queen next move gonna be a checkmate if you take that one you're gonna lose the queen anyway and in actual game g6 is played which is also very accurate response now queen moves to f1 what are you gonna do if you play as black think carefully because this rock is poison can you take this one after that you can see white has a perpetual in this position you need to be very very uh, careful so keep checking check c5 and moving to here king and uh, d5 
That's the last move for the game. Why to resign? Why? Because if you move the king to here, rook can gets to here. You're gonna lose the queen. If you move the queen to uh, here, you're gonna lose the queen anyway. That's the game for today. I hope you enjoyed that one, and I see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.